Ese es el tema. Stop it, man. Let's build a hovercraft. <laughs> that thing's pretty cool. I'm kind of impressed with how heavy it is and how well it hovers at such low throttle. I guess it's time to wrap up this pre-beta build. Okay, it is kind of cold. I don't like this. I saw it back.
batteries. One second. I don't have enough rudder authority. Did you get it? Yeah, I didn't even get rudder. What do you say, Ted Raptor? Go through that big puddle over there. And it broke. <laughs> it's only oh, hot glued. Break. It's only hot glued on there. Actually, that's epoxy. So I guess I'll have to address this because this this is okay for a first go, but it needs some adjustments, like for reals. It broke in half. Well, that was pretty awful. Well, for the most part, it actually did work okay for as heavy as it turned out. This print was actually printed way too heavy for my um, first initial uh, print. It was printed at 20% infill, and I really wanted to try it at 10% because there's too much plastic in here. You kind of see it's a, it's really heavy. Another thing too is the epoxy that I kind of used uh, to hold this thing together. Probably wasn't the best choice. It kind of did split and break here. And uh, I think I'm going to address that for version number two. Another thing was uh, there was not enough steering authority too. The uh, rudder itself, there's only just a singular rudder on it right now. I think I'm going to go to a two twin rudder design. And also the uh, duct on the rear of it, the uh, thrust motor or whatever. The servo is like terribly placed in there. That's a pretty awful position for the servo. And the canopy is just too small, so I also didn't do any measurements there. So that needs to be fixed as well. And... Uh, well, I think it's time to build hovercraft number two. Yeah, hovercraft. Uh, that was pretty fun. So for the most part, the hovercraft actually works pretty well. Maybe I have to say it's probably like a um, probably a 7.5 out of 10 for my first like kind of 3D printed hovercraft thing. 3D printing is still kind of new to me, so I'm still kind of learning the ropes of this stuff as I go along, and also kind of 3D catting as well. So this is kind of like two things to learn at once for me. So as far as hovercraft goes, the STL files will be released. Um, check for them shortly in the video if they're not released immediately. They'll be on Thingiverse or something like that. And some quick tips before you guys uh, print this out and build your own. Uh, make sure you print it at 10% infill for the nacelles. And the actual hull, the hovercraft, I print it out at 8.8% uh, 8 .8 infill. And that's, um, and that's on uh, Kira. As far as the power system goes, uh, these are just uh, 2808. Oh, wait, what are these, Ian? These are... No, 2204, 2300 kV um, Emax motors. You can find any sort of quadcopter motor. They'll all kind of work the same. I started the first one off with a smaller 1806 motor, but I decided just to go to these other ones just because the bolt pattern was the same for all of these, so I didn't have to modify the uh, existing nacelle. And plus, these motors are super cheap. You can find them just about anywhere. 
Driving this thing on water is a kind of another challenge too. I really don't recommend this specific one, or at least in this specific throttle setup, because right now the uh, lift motor is tied into the uh, throttle motor, just to kind of make it really easy for someone who's never drone, uh, driven a hovercraft to drive this thing around. Since you simply just jab the throttle, it would lift the thing up and turn it around, and it was basically kind of mixing all the controls into one. Especially if you got in trouble, you just pull the throttle off, and the whole thing scr uh, comes screaming to the stop. But the problem with that, it, was, it would kind of tear your skirt up. And if you're on water, you definitely could not do that. And another thing, too, is that, uh, I flew this in quite a bit trying to drive it on water. The problem was I would advance the throttle more to kind of get the lift fan to kick more air under there to kind of lift the skirt up higher off the water. But the problem is this would also increase the speed of the back motor, kind of shoving the hovercraft forward. And if you got any water over the front of it, it would start to kind of tuck under and roll over. Uh, I highly recommend you guys waterproof your hovercraft. I recommend taking the ends of the ESCs and filling them full of epoxy just to kind of make sure they're actually waterproof and spraying the receiver with Corrosion X and also the um, just a light, a very, very light dab of them on the bottom of the bearings of the motors if you got really cheap ones that are prone to rusting. I also uh, waterproofed my servo because eventually that thing kind of stopped working too because this thing sank quite a bit. Uh -huh. <laughs> Get on that big rock again. Now do something. Yeah. Toy fit. Rocks. I bet it does. There's already a lot of holes. I'm looking at it. Driving the hovercraft is pretty easy. It's really kind of like driving a jet ski, where if you try to coast with the jet ski with the throttle off, you really can't turn. You really need to be jabbing the power right as you add in a rudder command to get the thing to kind of slip around. It's like, yeah, it's kind of like driving a jet ski on like water or driving a car on ice, but as soon as you let off the throttle, the car comes to a complete stop. Unlike ice, which you can need to slide and then probably crash. The skirt material is really just a trash bag. I would probably look into something a little bit more durable, maybe like ripstop nylon. However, there are some weight penalties with that. I just don't have any on hand to try out with. Maybe even try some more heavy-duty trash bags, perhaps. But this is still kind of just like a general thing anyone kind of build at home, as long as you got some general RC experience, some time to tinker, a 3D printer, and uh, you want to build a hovercraft, because I guess it's kind of required for this. Well, I guess this wraps up this video. Uh, definitely let me know what you guys think of this in the comments below, maybe whether it sucks or it's just good or it's bad, or whatever you want to see improvements to. And yes, the STL files are free, like I mentioned earlier, so check them out below. And um, be sure to go ahead and like, subscribe, or do what the new end card says. Click that little bell thing, too. That way you can become part of the notification squad when this thing, uh, when I let out the new videos for this thing. Because I got some really cool stuff coming up next week. I might try to throw this build in real, real soon, maybe in the next few days rather than a week. Because I have something really cool coming up next week. But uh, more on that later, and I will see you guys later.